Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Olivia and I never do sit down videos. This is so weird and unnatural for me, but today we are because I am doing another bed part video. Ever since I posted about the bev cart on YouTube and TikTok back in like 2019, I've gotten tons and tons of questions on both TikTok and YouTube, as well as some DMs of like girls telling me they've applied for the job or thinking about getting the job and just had questions for me, which I love getting DMs. Um, it's really fun. But I figured I would just sit down and compile all the questions I've been getting into a video and just tell you what I like about the job, what I don't like about the job, and just kind of let you guys know everything that I think you need to know about the BevCart if you're thinking about applying or have applied and are nervous for your first day. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. So I've got a list here on my phone of pros and cons and questions that I've been asked over the last couple of years. And I wanna start by saying that anything I'm about to say is strictly based on my experience and my golf club, and it's all my opinion. I cannot speak for every BevCart girl. I cannot speak for every club. Something I say that applies at my golf club may not apply at whatever one you're working at or applying to. So just take everything I say with a grain of salt. This is just my opinion and my experience, but I wanted to share anyway. I'm gonna start with answering questions and then I think do pros and cons because the questions will kind of lay out what it is I even do for those that don't know and they'll kind of get more specific and then I'll just generally speak about the job. So with that being said, the first question is what do I do? So what I do on the beverage cart is I have a golf cart. It's decked out with like coolers and a snack section and I will drive the opposite directions of the golfers and see if they need any food or drinks. The reason I go opposite direction is because they golf obviously from hole one to hole 18. And if I go from hole 18 to hole one, then I'll just keep crossing their paths over and over. So we're just doing opposite circles where I keep running into them and it's just the easiest way instead of like following them around the golf course. So I'll have beer, um, liquor sometimes, Gatorade, sodas, waters, um, snacks, granola bars, nuts, chips, hot dogs, burgers. Um, so you can only carry so much, but that's basically what I do. I just drive snacks and beverages around out on the golf course and sell them out there. Second question is how old do you have to be? This depends on your state's laws. In Georgia, I know that you have to be 18 to serve alcohol and 21 to pour alcohol. So if you want to work the beverage cart at 18, you could. I started when I was 18. I just wasn't allowed to take liquor out on the cart. So I could take beer since those were closed cans and I didn't have to open them or pour anything. But that is really just up to the laws of your state and the rules of your golf club. So that is something you would have to go and seek out the information for depending on what state you live in. So third question is how do you find and apply for this job when I was applying for this job. I knew this is a golf club in my neighborhood. It's really close to home. My mom worked here way back in the day when it was under a different name and management. And um, she used to do the beverage cart about 23 years ago when she was pregnant with my sister. So I always knew that this specific golf club was around. And when I started looking for jobs, I just knew that this was the one I wanted to work at. I would recommend going around to different golf clubs in your area. I know there's like two or three other neighborhoods that have their own golf courses and beverage cart jobs and golf clubs. So I'd really just go around to the different golf clubs, see where you wanna work, what type of golf club you wanna work at, if it's um, a private members only or if it's a public course, that makes a big difference. And then just see what their availability is, see if they're hiring, see what you have to do. You may have to start as a server and work your way up to being a beverage cart girl, but that also kind of depends on the golf club. But for me, I just figured out what club I wanted to work at, went in there, asked them for an application, filled that out, and then you'll probably have an interview. And it's a pretty simple training process, application process, all of that. Um, so yeah, that's all you have to do. Question number four is how did I get trained? So at my golf club, again, um, I went out on the cart with one of the other beverage cart girls for I think it was two days. At the beginning, she was driving and doing everything. I was just sitting in another seat, kind of watching, observing, seeing how it works, seeing how she talked to them, trying to learn the products that we had and learn the different types of alcohols or snacks and just which way to go around the course because sometimes there's like, weird turns that you have to make and you just have to learn your way around the course. So once I kind of got a hang of things, then we switched and the other girl that was training me sat in the passenger seat and I got to 
drive the cart, I got to talk to people, I got to start serving people, I got to practice making sales, all that stuff. So it's really, you just kind of have to like do it with somebody else who knows what they're doing until you get the hang of it. Um, it can be a little intimidating at first, but I think it's really helpful to have someone like one-on-one -on -one with you um, training you. So that's how I got trained and it worked for me. And I think that's probably if I had to guess how any golf club would do it, just like any other job or like waitressing job, you know, you would follow behind someone, shadow them. And then after two or three training days, then you could go on your own. The next question I got was, is this a year round job or just a summer job? Um, again, specifically at my golf club, I can say that it is a year round job. Um, in Georgia, it doesn't really get like extremely, extremely cold in the winter. And as long as there's golfers, there is a beverage cart out there with them. So I've worked in 100 degree weather in June, July, August into like 25, 30 degree weather in November, December, January. I typically only work over the summers because I'm in college and that's just when I'm home, but a lot of my coworkers are there all year round and have no problem with it. If you're in an area where golfers will still be out golfing and there's business to be had, then I would imagine that there's still a job for you to be had. But I don't know about states where it gets really cold or where it's um, frozen throughout most of the winter, you can't golf on frozen ga grass. So there may be some states and areas or clubs that close down the whole beverage cart Thing at a certain time of the year so again that's something that once you know more specifically which club you want to work at that you could definitely ask them about but I would also say generally it is a year-round job next question is what are my hours like and do I get to make my own schedule I personally do not make my own schedule I have a manager he does the scheduling for you know the kitchen waitresses bartenders beverage cart girls all of that so he makes my schedule, but as for the hours, I definitely have more flexible hours than some of the other waitresses or when I'm waitressing, mostly because I just come in early and stay later. My typical shift is either 9 or 10 a.m. until 5 or 6 p.m. If I know there's a tournament going on or if a lot of regulars are going out or if it's just a really beautiful day or there's something going on where I feel like it may be busy, then I'll take the initiative to just go in a couple hours early and stay a couple hours late. I don't always go in early, but I will say that 95% of the time I am staying later than I'm scheduled just because one, it's hard to predict when you're gonna get back to the club or how long it'll take you to get around the course. So sometimes it'll take me 30 minutes, sometimes it'll take an hour and a half depending on how busy it is. So. Sometimes I will just accidentally stay later than I'm supposed to. Sometimes I will intentionally stay later than I'm supposed to. If there is still a ton of people on the golf course or there's like a few groups that are buying a lot of stuff, I'll stay out for them. So that is where it's a bit more flexible. My boss also trusts me enough to know that if I'm not making money and it's not worth me being out there, then I can make that call and go talk to him and say, hey, no one's out there. It's not really making any money. Can I go home early? Like I'm not needed here. So it's definitely a little bit more flexible than when I am waitressing, so that's something I enjoy. I will say in addition to that though, I know there are many, 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 many clubs where the beverage cart girls start at like 6 or 7 a.m. and end way later, so that one is probably very specific to my specific golf club that I work at. I know there are a lot of clubs where the beverage cart girl is out there as soon as the golfers are at 6 a.m., so that is another thing you may want to ask a specific club if you're looking into this. Next question is, do I get paid hourly? Which the answer is yes, I do get paid hourly. It is the same as my server's hourly pay. Um, it's not a lot, it's not even minimum wage. It's a few dollars just because if you work in an industry where you're getting tips, then that is where your income comes from and they know that and the hourly wage is more for like compensation. Um, to even out slow days. So yes, I do get paid hourly, but I would say like 90% of my income is just based off the tips. So next question that I'm sure a lot of people want to know is do I keep all of my tips and how much do I make in tips? And the answer to the first question is yes, I keep 100% of the tips that I make, whether it's on a member's account, credit card or debit card, or in cash. All of those tips are mine. As for how much I make, that depends. I would say I got lucky at this golf club and people are generally generous. If it's a 
member account or debit or credit card, I tend to make around 20, 25% on tips, which is very standard. When we take a debit card or credit card sales, we use the Square app and it tells you like 18% gratuity is this, 20% gratuity is this, 22 is this. So people just click the button and most of the time they'll just click 20%. So my card sales are usually pretty even with 20%. On the other hand, my cash tips are much, much higher. I would say my cash tips are around 60 to 70%. Um, this is because people are generally more generous with cash. I know that when I spend cash, I'm like, oh, I basically didn't spend money because you can't see it coming out of your account. So I think people are just more generous with cash. People also will just hand me big bills and tell me to keep the change. People will get a cup of ice, which is free, and hand me a couple dollars. So. It's all of these things that kind of just add up that make it so I get more cash tips. Another thing, there are ways you can kind of increase your chances of getting higher cash tips. I do get to keep all of my tips and I make about 60% of my sales and tips, which is a lot. Another question I got asked a lot was, do I have to work in the restaurant too? And the answer is yes. All of the beverage cart girls at my golf club also work inside as servers. Um, that's just so no one's getting like monopoly over the beverage cart and that we know how to work inside Just because we always need servers inside and there's only one beverage cart girl at a time But there's four or five servers at a time. So at my club I am required to work as a waitress too, but I would do that anyways. I love waitressing. I think it's a fun addition There's days where I'd rather waitress instead of do the bev cart and there's days where I'd rather do the bev cart instead of waitress So it is nice that I get to do both as for other clubs and other areas, I'm not sure, so that is another thing that you'd have to ask more specifically, but at my club and a lot of other clubs that I know of, um, you do have to work both as a waitress and a beverage cart girl. The next question I got is, do I make connections with the golfers? The answer to this is yes, I do. I've come to know a lot of the regulars very well and they've come to know me very well. Um, obviously, over time, seeing somebody over and over and over and over again, you're just generally gonna get to know them. And if you don't know like people who golf regularly or like the golf community, like they're there all day, every day. Like I feel like I see some of them more than their wives do sometimes. So it's very easy to make connections when you're seeing somebody as often as you do. I also think it's important to try and go out of your way to make connections or small talk or just let them know you're interested or you know, would like to get to know them and they're not just like some golfer drinking beer. It's, I try and learn their names if I can. I try and, you know, not necessarily eavesdrop, but if I hear someone say like something, something about birthday boy, then I'll say, oh my gosh, like whose birthday is it? And just being interested in them and invested in them and not just like, you know, putting beer in a bag and handing it to them and taking their money, making it more personal has really helped my tips. And a lot of these guys are really great guys. Anytime I am about to leave for school, they'll, you know, wish me well, give me a few extra dollars, tell me how much they're wishing me luck and how much they're thinking of me and how they're gonna miss me. And it's really nice to have people that look forward to see you, especially when you're going to a place like work. It's nice to have people that like wanna see you there. All right, so this is the last question I have written down. And this is actually a question I got a few times and I was kind of, you know, thought it was weird because I never really thought about this when I was starting out, but it is a huge, huge part of being a beverage cart girl is golf etiquette. Last question is how do I approach the golfers without disrupting their game and this is something you really just have to learn as you go. There are certain spots on the golf course where you can see really far ahead. So I can see at the hole if there's someone at the tee box teeing off because remember I'm going backwards so I'll be I'll hit the green and then the fairway and then I'll go and then I'll hit the tee box where they're gonna hit the tee box and then the fairway and then the green. So there's some places where if I'm by the green, I can see them teeing off and I'll know just stop and wait right there until I see their carts start moving. So I do not move until their carts start moving. Another thing is that as much as there are spots where you can see ahead, there are a lot of spots where you can't see ahead. Golf courses can get very curvy. The cart path is windy and I have to stay on the cart path. So it's not like I can, you know, just drive over here and see if anyone's out there and then go back on the cart path. I have to stay on the cart path so sometimes I will just have to like look extra hard or just go very 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 slow until I'm at a point where I can see them and the bottom line is there are times where you're going to drive up on golfers or you're not going to see them or you're not going to hear them or they're going to be hidden there's going to be times where you interrupt their game or where you think they're done teeing off and then one more person had to go and you had already started driving 
I say it's just important to do your absolute best and if I do interrupt their game, a lot of them, you know, they might like give me shit or like make a joke. A lot of them are, you know, understanding. They don't really care. Some of them will be a little upset, but you just have to say like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize there was one more person teeing off or I just couldn't see you guys or, you know, you just have to like own up to it and tell them you're really sorry and that just know it was poor etiquette and try not to do it again. Over time, you'll learn where you can and cannot see the golfers and where you should probably like stop and wait. Sometimes I'll like park the cart, hop off and like walk up to where I can see them. Um, but I mean, it's really just, you just have to kind of like use your common sense and know where the blind spots are and know where they might be or try and like listen as best you can. Sometimes I'll hear them hit a ball way before I see them hit it. So etiquette is a big part of the game and you'll kind of learn it as you go. And it's really dependent also on the course and just who you might run into if that happens. I knew I would forget something, so I'm just gonna throw it in now and you can tell that I'm like refilming this later because I put a sweatshirt on and I'm not taking it back off. So there was one more question that I wanted to answer that I had forgotten to write down in my notes, but someone had asked me if I have a calculator on the golf course with me. So I do not have an actual calculator. I have my phone if I need it for the most part. I just do mental math on the larger sales sometimes to get thrown off or sometimes when I'm subtracting how much they gave me from how much they owe me, like that subtraction throws me off. But for the most part, it's easy mental math that I just do in my head. But if I do need like a calculator for something, I have my phone to help me. So if that is something that you struggle with or math is not your strong suit, or maybe you were panicking about that, um, you personally at my club, you can have your phone. I have to have my phone because that's how I do credit card sales and I can use my calculator. So. Yeah, I just wanted to answer that, and I hope I alleviated someone with a math fear. I hope I alleviated your anxiety. Okay, so that was all the questions, and now I'm gonna move into the pros and cons. Obviously, these are very opinionated. Some things I may think are pros, other people may think are cons, but these are just things that I think are good and or bad about this job, and I wanted to share them with you just a little bit more generally in case all the questions I just answered wasn't enough. The first pro that I've written down is that you get to work all by yourself. I know for some people this may not be a pro, but for me it is. I really enjoy working by myself. Um, I have a certain system for things. I have a certain way I like to do things. I mean, everyone does. And it's just nice when I can just fully do what I wanna do and have my system and just know what I'm doing. And it really helps me be efficient and quick when I don't have you know, someone else out there with me where I'm like having to communicate with them and trying to get on the same page. Um, it's just one thing that I do like is working by myself and not having to like depend on anyone. Second thing kind of going along the same lines is I have a lot more freedom. Obviously I am out there on the beverage cart by myself. My manager is inside but I can't have a boss or manager or someone like riding along with me all the time watching over me. It's really nice that I can say like, I know I'm a hard worker. I know I, would, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing and I don't need anyone like watching over me. I can have that kind of freedom. I also have the freedom like I was talking about earlier. I can come in early or stay a little bit later if I wanted to, or I also have the freedom to go to my boss and say, hey, like from my judgment, I don't think we're gonna make any money. I don't think it's worth it for me to be out here. And he'll say, okay. It's also, you know, you can judge it, judge the situations as they come. If there's a group of regulars and you're chit-chatting, that can be fine. Sometimes people will take up a lot more of your time than you intend to, but it's not like inside where you're waitressing and you have a bunch of other tables that are just sitting there like watching you talk. You'll get to everyone eventually. That's the beauty of going the opposite direction of the golfers. So it does give you a lot more of a stress-free, relaxed, like personable environment where it feels a lot less like work and just being out there with the golfers and getting to know them and just giving them food and drinks like while I'm just like hanging out out there. The next pro I had was that you make more in cash. I would say this is true at basically any golf club. You also have to remember that a lot of the golfers are of the older generation. A lot of the older generation carries just wads and wads of cash in a rubber band. I don't know why that's a thing for them, but they just pay more often in cash and they also just tip more in cash. So that is where that huge acquisition of cash comes from. It's the quality, I mean the quantity 
and like the frequency that people are just using cash. So the last pro that I have written down is that it's easier to get to know the golfers. I kind of touched on this earlier as well, but when you're out there, it's much easier to get to know them because it's much less structured. It's not like when you're waitressing and you walk up to a table and everyone stops talking and you just ask them what they want to drink and then you leave and they start talking. Like the side conversations will kind of keep happening in between my conversations with them and me getting what they want. So if I happen to hear someone mention a birthday or an anniversary or they're having a kid or they got a new job or they're celebrating something or you know, whatever it is, I'll try and, you know, tell them and involve myself, not in like a creepy way, but I'll just say like, oh my gosh, like whose birthday is it? Or can I get you a birthday shot? Or what are we celebrating? Congratulations, like whatever. I'll try and just like involve myself, let them know I'm interested in what they're saying, interested in them as people, and like that I'm interested in more than just giving them beer and getting their money from them. I think it's nice to make them feel like you're listening and you care and like whatever and that'll go a long way in your tips too. The harder you work, the more you make. So I mean, I think if you have a good work ethic and you're really like putting effort into making them feel like people and like they're important because let me tell you, golfers think they are the most important. Each one thinks they're more important than the next and that's just how it goes and sometimes if you play into that, it'll work out for your favor. That was all the pros I have written down. If I think of anything else, I'll throw it in here. But now we're gonna move on to the cons of this job. There are not many, and some of them are pretty tolerable. The first one is that there's no weather control. Obviously, the beverage cart is outside, golfing is outside, so sometimes it can be hit or miss. There will be days where I will be there, it's busy, and all of a sudden it starts raining, everyone goes home, I'm in the middle of the course, I'm getting soaking wet, and I'm no longer making any money. There's days where it'll be raining before I even wake up and my boss will text me and say, hey, like, course is too wet, like, just stay home so I won't get to work that day, which sucks. Whereas, you know, inside, I would still have a shift, I'd still get to go in and I'd still get to make, like, a little bit of money. So sometimes that can be tough. In the winter, sometimes the grass will be frozen and they won't be able to golf until it thaws out, so that'll delay me a bit. Um, there's just things like that where, you know, the weather is uncontrollable, so therefore your job may be uncontrollable too. The second con, which there's nothing I can really do about or anyone can really do about, is that there are limited options in what you can sell. The beverage cart is only so big, there's only so much volume, there's only so many cans and bottles and snacks and waters and whatever that can fit in there. So inside, obviously, we have the full liquor shelves, we have the full beer, we have the drafts, we have all of that. But when you're on the beverage cart, you're very limited. And people will ask you a lot of the times for very specific things, or do you have this type of liquor, this type of liquor, this type of liquor. And sometimes you'll just have to disappoint them and say, no, this is what we have instead. But bottom line is, even though you have limited options, make your options known. This also is like something where if they ask for a certain type of, type of beer, you can say, we don't have that, but we have this one similar. That is something that you have to learn over time is just, you know, what type of beer is this? What's, what's a light beer? What's a lager? What's an IPA? Those are things you just have to learn because people will ask. So although there are limited options, knowing your options can really help. And there's nothing you can really do about that. Also, sometimes if they really, really want something that I don't have on the beverage cart, I will say, when you get to the turn, they should have it inside. Like if you go upstairs and you get it there, and if they really want whatever they're set on, they'll they'll do what I said and go inside. And if they really just want alcohol right then and there, then there's something that they will have, or I will have for them. This is the last con I have listed. I might come up with more, like I said, but one thing is cat calling. This was also a question I got. I'm not sure why I didn't write it down, but I got a question about whether golfers flirt with me or come on to me or can be inappropriate. And the answer is yes, they can be inappropriate. When I talk about this, there's always like one golfer that comes to mind. And I'm sure all of my coworkers will also know who I was talking about. Um, but for the most part, they are harmless. I have never had anyone like actually come on to me. They can be a little disrespectful, they can be a little inappropriate, they can be a little, you know, touchy-feely sometimes. Like, I personally am okay with giving them hugs, especially the regulars that I know very well. I would, you know, be comfortable with that. Sometimes guys will like pat you on the back or grab your arm or like grab your hand a little too long. So there's definitely some issues with that, but I would say that for the most part, 
I've gotten very lucky with it just being like harmless old men flirting or telling me I'm cute, telling me I'm pretty, telling me if they were 40 years younger they would date me. Um, you just have to be sure to keep it professional with them. Don't engage back. The one guy that I was thinking of earlier that I said when I talk about someone being inappropriate, I, I think of this guy. You, like, you just have to kind of put them in, your, in their place and not really in a disrespectful way. I mean, if you have to disrespect them because they're disrespecting you that much, then do so. But if you know it's harmless, but it's just getting to be a little too much, then honestly put them in their place. Tell them like, no, like that's not okay. You'd never have a chance. Let's keep it professional. Like whatever you need to do to kind of just ease the situation. But I would just say never give in to it. Never like reciprocate it. Try not to like come on to them. It's just not really classy and it's not really professional. And I think it's better to be rude than to be inappropriately hit on by usually an older man. So that is one negative. So with that, that was all of the questions I had been asked and written down. And those are all the pros and cons I had written down. I might think of a, a couple more and like throw them in the comments or something. Um, but if you guys have any more questions or there's anything I didn't talk about that you wanted to know or something that I didn't answer fully or completely, then let me know in the comments. Go find my TikTok. I've got a couple of videos there where I've answered a bunch of questions. Um, or you can DM me on Instagram. I've had a couple girls DM me on Instagram. Their names are Alexandria Leon, I think is how you say her last name, and Haley DeMoss. And they both DM me and said that they found my YouTube video and were thinking about getting the job and just had a couple questions, which I absolutely love. It makes me so happy. So feel free to DM me on Instagram. I may not answer right away, but I will eventually because I love talking about Bevcart. I love convincing people to do it. I love telling them about my experience. I love hearing that people have seen my YouTube video and enjoyed it. Like it really just makes me happy. So with that being said, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I hope it was very informative. I hope it convinced some of you guys to apply for a beverage cart job or, you know, maybe you just have been stuck on BevCart TikTok since 2019 and here you are again. So. Thank you so much for watching and who knows when my next video will be because that is just me, but I will see you whenever it happens. One thing before you go that I forgot to mention, I do have another YouTube video. I mentioned it in the beginning of this one. It is a day in my life on the Bev cart. So if you want a full, like where I walk you through vlog style, you can see me in action doing the beverage cart, then go watch that video. That one is very, very, very informative as well. That one is more of like a day in my life, like what you would be doing. You can actually watch what I'm doing. But in that video, I was not explaining really what I was doing or answering very many questions. So this is kind of the follow up video to that. Um, so yes, go watch that video. It's really good. Um, I feel like almost everybody knows about it because everyone on my channel pretty much came because of that video. But if you did not know that that video existed, then feel free to go watch it. All right. Thank you. Bye.